Also in London, there's an intriguing heavyweight battle featuring a man who made his name in prize fighter. Martin Rogan reckons winning the first of our knockout competitions was just the start of a great career. Here's Ed Robinson. Belfast hardman Martin Rogan smashed his way into the spotlight, crowned the inaugural prize fighter champion. And the heart and the stubbornness of this man, Martin Rogan, he said he'd win it. He upset the odds, upset the favourite. I was impressed myself with, with what I'd done. I knew that I would do it um, weeks prior to it in here in the gym. Three dramatic wins on one historic night showed the all-action heavyweights for real. I fired out everything that I had to fire out, and I had a great semi-final with Dave Ferguson. This is brutal. Another mini cracker. In a thrilling final, Rogan shattered the unbeaten record of David Dolan in typically crowd-pleasing style. It's brute force from Rogan. When people buy tickets to, to come and be bored, people come to buy tickets because they want a bit of entertainment. That's what they're there for. And when you're when you're in this this level of boxing, you're you're there to entertain. But now he faces an even bigger challenge. Ending the career of 2000 Olympic champion Audley Harrison. It says, there's 100 foot trees out there, and you start hitting them at the bottom of the hatchet. The fall. It says, none. It'll not go the distance. I'll stop him. Late starter Rogan entered Prize Fighter after just seven fights and believes he's dramatically improved in the eight months since. From April to May, it's chalk and cheese. It's just completely turned around. I put more thought on it and moving a lot better and just boxing a lot better. Rogan's even put his taxi driving business on hold as he prepares to shock the Londoner. Well, look, you're standing my way and I'm coming through you. I've been training very, very, very hard for this year, for the biggest opportunity of my career. And I'm not going to let it slip. I'm not going to let it go away. This is mine. This is mine to take and I'm going to take it. So it's a wonderful story. When Martin Rogan's around, you guarantee it won't be boring. No, he's powerful, he's lots of strength, and he really comes to fight. And as he said there, he's going to make Audley Harrison fight. There's no doubt about that. In the prize fighter final, he, he showed what he's all about, all about determination, all about not taking a backward step, as he showed in the final against David Dolan. Yeah, I mean, he's not a loose-limbed, uh, skillful boxer, but he's actually better than he looks. He's accurate and he's... Uh, he, we've said he's powerful, he's got punching power, no doubt about that. And he looks stiff and, and, and ungainly, but actually, if you watch what he does, you appreciate there's real thought behind that. Can similarities be drawn between David Dole and Audley Harrison, a, a, a well-schooled boxer? Both, both very good amateurs, Harrison, of course, the top amateur. Um, but Harrison is a lot bigger, but uh, as, as Rogan says, he's going to chop him down from, from the, the body up and really make him work. And Audley doesn't like fighting. You know. In here, in here, this was a three-round fight, and they both went for it over three rounds, so it'll be a slightly different tactics, but he'll make Audley Harrison fight, and uh, Audley doesn't like doing that for, for, for long distances. He really captured the public's imagination when he, when he won the prize fight, and it just shows you, when you take your opportunities, what can happen. Yeah, uh, he's a lovely man, he, uh, but, but he, he really wants it, and he's unbeaten, don't forget that. He's got a proud record that he doesn't want to lose that, so you know, it'll be a real test for Audley Harrison. All right, judgment night for Martin Rogan in London. In Las Vegas, it could be a golden night for two of the biggest names in boxing. It's the fight that's being billed as boxing's dream match. A hundred million dollars at stake as two of the all-time greats meet in Las Vegas. There's no backing down for me. And I know there's no back, uh, backing down for Manny Pacquiao, so we're gonna, we're gonna clash. Welcome back. Top of the bill on Judgment Night, a stateside super fight. It's a six-way world champion facing a four-way world champion. Ricky Hatton hoping to take on the winner. Adam Smith sets it up. This is the dream welterweight match that has the boxing world transfixed. It's 2008's most intriguing affair as American legend Oscar De La Hoya tackles Filipino superstar Manny Pacquiao. It's another big fight and, uh, you know, Pacquiao uh, again uh, fighting a pound for pound fighter in the world and it's going to be uh, fireworks, that's for sure. It's going to be a, a great, great fight, big fight for me and, you know, 
I'm hoping for a victory on December 6th. There's huge British interest. Our rejuvenated hitman Ricky Hatton will be ringside, waiting in the wings for the winner. What sort of a champion would I be if I just stayed in my normal weight and didn't set the big challenges on? Bring them on, that's what Ricky Hatton's all about. Will size matter? Della Hoyer's a six-weight world champion who has won titles up as far as middleweight. Pacquiao's first crown came way down at flyweight. And although he's a four-weight world king, the Filipino whirlwind now leaps up to ten stone seven. First in, in, in history in boxing that a Filipino can uh, fight in 100% from flyweight to moving up 100%. So it's, it's a big, big honor to me to, to win the fight. There's added spice with the trainers. Pacquiao's coach, Freddie Roach, has inside knowledge, having worked with Della Hoya, while Nacho Berestein's long been plotting Pacquiao's downfall through Juan Manuel Marquez. I trained Oscar for his fight. I know his, I know his strengths, I know his weaknesses. I learned a lot in eight weeks, okay? And I'm going to take advantage of it. Creo yo que le hemos ganado dos veces. He's a very difficult fighter, but like any fighter, he has his weaknesses. And I think Oscar has the uh, abilities and capabilities to beat Pacquiao. Will pound for pound best Pacquiao strike gold with his lightning southpaw speed? Or will De La Hoya be too powerful and too good? There's no backing down for me. And I know there's no back, uh, backing down for Manny Pacquiao, so we're gonna, we're gonna clash. Let's head straight to Las Vegas and join Jim Watts and Ian Dark. Well, this fight has had its critics, but it's amazing the way it's captured the public imagination over here. All the tickets sold out within one hour. What's the big appeal, do you think, Jim? Well, first of all, anything involving Oscar de la Hoya is massive. It's huge. It's an event. This time he's fighting, in some people's opinion, the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Manny Pacquiao, who's on a roll, who's at his peak. It's a strange match. I was surprised when the match was made, but the more I think about it, I can see the appeal. Remember that Oscar De La Hoya hasn't made welterweight for seven years, but he's been on weight for about two weeks ahead of this fight. What's in it for him, do you think, De La Hoya here? It looks like a hiding to nothing, doesn't it? Yeah, well, we've been asking what keeps Oscar De La Hoya going. I mean, his, his legacy is secured. And I don't think beating Manny Pacquiao would add to his legacy. Obviously, the financial gain will be tremendous. But, but if you know, he, he lost, but if he lost, Jim, it would certainly dent his legacy, wouldn't it? Of course it would, and that's why he can't afford to lose. And I, I think he's the smartest man outside of the ring, as, long, as well as one of the smartest men inside the ring. I think he knows this job is too big for Manny Pacquiao. Size does matter you know Pacquiao used to be a flyweight De La Hoya has been up as heavy as middleweight it's a huge gap how does Pacquiao go about trying to bridge what looks like an impossible mission yeah well giving away weight in a, in a fight you notice it gets tougher as it goes along so Manny Pacquiao must go off to a tremendous start he must be well ahead at the halfway stage keeping in mind Oscar De La Hoya has never even at his peak been the best 12 round fight in the world and hoping and hang on for the verdict he can do it but I don't think so mm, can he even begin to take De La Hoya's power if that left hook lands. It's the fight here they're calling the dream fight and it is making a lot of money. They're talking about a hundred million dollars. That is huge, Nicky. Absolutely massive. I mean, as they say, you know, anything Oscar De La Hoya has anything to do with sells out straight away. He, he really is box office. Um, size seems to be the issue here, but De La Hoya has lost to smaller men before. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Yeah, but usually when he's lost to smaller men, such as Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather Shane Mosley, they've been brilliant boxers, and Mo Mayweather was at the top of his game here. And also, actually wasn't that small. He, he, he proved against Hatton he was a big welterweight, and, um, you know, a brilliant boxer too. Defensively, you can see here, he's, you know, taking some punches to the side, but ignoring those. He was a brilliant boxer. Um, and De La Hoya, again, ran him very, very close. You know, he, this is a 35-year-old man that's still able to produce brilliant performances. Pacquiao, similarities with Mayweather, the speed? Well, certainly the speed. He, he's, on the whole, more powerful than Mayweather. So that, that could be a problem for us with La Hoya. He's a very, very powerful fighter, throws non-stop for 12 rounds, and is very, very fit. And, and it's the end of the fights where De La Hoya has proved recently to be weak, and that could be a stamina's a an issue. Then is it stamina's an issue for De La Hoya? You know, he's uh, he's trained very, very hard for this one. But 35, if it's been a problem for the last two or three or four years, it should still be a problem now. Tell me what's harder, going up a couple of ways or coming down a couple of ways? I think coming down a couple of ways would be normally be harder, but but De La Hoya coming down to a welterweight is probably is is 
optimum weight at the moment, so he'll be really fit for this, and he's been on the weight for a while, so it won't be a problem. And will Pacquiao be slower because he's had to put on this extra weight? I don't, I don't think so. He's so, such a brilliant physical specimen that he'll be carrying the power and the speed with him. Saturday night.